this session here will be on Affordable Care Act communication. Um, it's going to give you a little overview of some of the work we've been doing with uh, Affordable Care Act right now. And then also some of the platforms that we use to uh, share the information that we get from the Hill out with all the communities. So I just wanted to uh, draw your attention to some important dates that are current uh, as well as um, um, coming up in the future for the Affordable Care Act. Um, as you know, Medicare enrollment is uh, upon us currently right now. So it is open until December the 7th. That opened on October the 1st, as well as the marketplace had its second um, en enrollment opening up on this past Saturday. So that was a great achievement um, that came about and was able to be followed through with the Affordable Care Act, um, being uh, able to open up that marketplace and there were actually no issues in the technology. So that was um, definitely a, a great <laughs> um, success for them. Uh, but also to, uh, um, also to make you aware that it also includes the ability to enroll in the SHOP program, which is for employers to purchase insurance for their employees if that's something that you would like to do. Um, and that open place in, and that open enrollment is through February 15th. Um, it is a shortened period, so um, as you talk with your clients and talk with your staff, um, just making sure that um, even though there's a, um, ability to enroll at later points throughout the year, that that um, November 15th through February 15th time period um, is, is shortened. Um, and you can also go to healthcare.gov to find out more information. Um, as you all know, Medicaid and CHIP are year-round in their enrollment period, um, as well as the special American Indian Alaska Native um, an enrollment periods and any life changes that may come about, um, such as having a baby or um, uh, losing insurance due to job loss and things of that nature. Um, the next upcoming event that uh, Nakui and I, as well as um, NHB and, and the National Congress of American Indians are promoting right now is the National Tribal Day of Action for the ACA enrollment. That will be happening on November the 25th. And it really is a day that we want to make sure that all of us uh, Urbans are also making sure that we're promoting that throughout our communities. So using your social media, um, if there's newsletters or flyers that you're sending out, making sure that everyone's aware that that's a really important day for us all to come together, travel or urban, um, to make sure that um, we're supporting and behind um, open enrollment period timeframe. Um, and then also there's an upcoming White House roundtable um, so it is the week of December the 8th. Um, there isn't an exact date known yet, but that will be held in D.C. Um, and it really is a way for um, the White House um, as well as partnerships with CMS and the tribes and urbans to come together and really have discussions around ACA, um, any challenges, any successes, um, and just promoting, um, promoting the ACA from, I guess you can say, from the top up uh, at the White House. Okay. So at this point, what can you do? Um, and I'll run through these quickly because most of them you already know, but we just really want to make sure that we um, uh, stress upon you the importance of getting folks enrolled um, if they're willing to. Um, and one of the first things that you can do is to become a, um, certified to assist in enrollment. I know that a lot of our urban programs have actually been successful at having um, people on staff that are certified as CACs or um, certified enrollment counselors um, in their areas. And this has really been beneficial to, um, you know, the clients and the people that you serve that come into your clinic, as well as being able to outreach um, and be a part of um, um, other partnerships um, where you have the availability of someone that is American Indian Alaska Native working with those folks in the community. Um, and then also your facility themselves can become certified as an assistance uh, counselor organization. Um, and in, uh, information for that, once again, can be found on healthcare.gov. Um, and then lastly, uh, most importantly, one of the easier things to do is actually to be able to hold an event, an enrollment fair, or uh, some type of activity in which you're um, marketing and promoting um, for a day and a time for everyone to come together to get enrolled. Um, and usually during those events, you um, definitely want to try to recruit some of your local navigators. There are um, 
to navig urban navigator sites that were granted and then three, I'm sorry, um, as well as any um, certified uh, enrollment counselors. Um, and then also one uh, really uh, kind of unique but um, really is a, a, a really strategic way of getting people into one area where you have technology versus just being out in the field is to work with your local colleges and universities. They have IT centers, they have libraries, um, and so using that facility as your enrollment fair, or your enrollment activity would provide them with, provide you with an opportunity just to have um, the computers there to help them enroll. Um, and it's free, more than likely. Um, yeah, so we're really promoting that everyone try to have some, have successful enrollment events and if you are planning on hosting events in the future, please let Nakui know or even pr uh, place some of that information um, on our Facebook page or link it to our page so that other um, urban communities can also see what you're doing and, you know, maybe get some ideas of uh, some successes that you're having. Um, and I just wanted to point out that this picture actually comes from one of our, uh, well, it wasn't ours. It was actually NIHB, I'm sorry. Um, but a partnership with NIHB, uh, we, they held an enrollment fair um, up in Salt Lake City. And so we were actually able to have a few of our navigators from the Salt Lake City area come in and help with enrollment at that training event. So this is just them at that event. Um, just a few tips about knowing your audience um, since we're talking about communication, making sure that you're, um, you know who your audience is and who the focus will be for your enrollment event so that you know how to actually market to them. Um, keeping in mind that elders may not use a smartphone or they may not use Facebook, but your youth um, in your community, just that might be an appropriate way to reach out to them. Um, and then also other ways of just getting that marketing out and um, making sure that your vo voice is heard in the community is to use things like um, a website, using your website as a way to promote your activity. Um, other ways that are, I'll just say free or low cost or just holding interviews uh, with a local public TV station or even just producing an op-ed um, that could actually be as a way of uh, um, not only getting the word across about the importance of enrollment but also providing um, information about an event that might be coming up that could be tagged into that, um, that op-ed. Um, and then most importantly, what we found um, over the course of the year that testimonials work best. Um, if you can find someone in your community that's actually been able to enroll and they have a great story that you can share with other um, folks in your community, it really is um, a, a stepping stone for someone that may, you know, they may have some um, hesitation about it. Um, so picking up some stories from your community, um, even using those uh, stories to, um, to actually work with your uh, state leaders and your local leaders um, in getting some advocacy done as well. And then lastly, um, I'm always about evaluation. So making sure that when you do hold these uh, enrollment affairs or enrollment events, that you are evaluating the work that you're doing. Um, and you definitely need to plan to do that prior to implementing that, um, that activity. Um, and it really is a great way for you to understand what's working for you, um, even just understanding the numbers that are uh, coming to the events so that you have some feedback for later on when you try to um, do, uh, replicate that same type of affair. Um, so you actually want to ask yourself, what outcomes are you measuring? Um, what's your purpose of even holding this fair beyond the fact that, you know, you want to try to increase the enrollment of American Indian Alaska Natives? It may help you come up with some questions that you could pose in your evaluation surveys that you create. Um, and these are just suggested questions. Um, the last thing that I wanted to talk about um, are um, American Indian Alaska Native exemptions. Um, I think we all know um, the importance of either making sure that our community gets enrolled into insurance or they apply for exemptions if, um, if applicable, just so that that is a way to prevent them from having to pay um, ta uh, taxes or a higher tax, I should say, um, uh, when tax season rolls around. And so um, 
granted these exemptions are for members of federally recognized tribes, um, but we also want to uh, make note that um, those that are eligible to receive services at IHS also can receive um, certification or documentation that shows that they're eligible for the exemption as well. Um, and that comes through your our, our PMS system. Um, so if you want more information about that application, it's on marketplace.gov. Um, and lastly, the exemptions are retroactive and prospective, so they are lifelong. Um, and they would only have to be filled out once, um, even if that person gets insurance. And lastly, a little bit about our actual um, activities that Nakui has uh, performed or been a part of are um, we've actually been able to work with several um, communities in providing in-person assistance and trainings. Um, and it's been, um, I think it's been a very fruitful experience for me um, in learning um, a lot of uh, about the benefits um, for American and Alaska Natives and being able to understand it in such a way to provide that information to you all. Um, but really uh, working, we worked with three, four communities um, over the last year, specifically one-on-one, -on -one, um, where we actually uh, held like one, one and a half day sessions um, on training their staff on the ACA and providing them with some tips and tools and resources. Um, we've also been a part of presentations at national events, um, specifically through um, the NIHO uh, partnership um, one of these was with um, or at NIHB's annual consumer conference. We actually held um, a workshop where we brought our navigators together to just share some best practices and experiences that they've had with the general um, participants at the conference. Um, and we also had participation at the NCAI annual convention marketplace that took place uh, just last month. Um, and then lastly, we have been um, able to develop some tools in supporting you all's um, outreach activities. Um, most recently, there was a, through SAMHSA, we actually were able to put together a compendium of some of the best practices that your community or what you have been using um, for outreach and enrollment. And that actually was released on SAMHSA's website where anyone can go on there and actually uh, um, download that brochure. Um, I can get the link to you later on if you haven't seen it. Um, and it actually came through, uh, I believe there were, there were 12 communities that um, submitted best practices for that. Um, and then lastly, there was the strategy briefs on insurance opportunities for American and Alaska Native um, communities that, uh, that came through CMS that was also um, developed um, and released as well. So there are actually some tools out there that are specific to urbans if you um, may have had trouble in the past looking for those types of brochures. And I'm going to skip over some of these, but um, they, uh, there's our contact information. And I wanted to at least promote um, the CUI itself in making sure that you either like, share, follow, connect, and subscribe to Nakui in these ways. <coughs> And with that, I'm going to actually turn it over to April Hell from NIHB. Uh, my colleague Don Coley and I, uh, we make up the tribal health reform team at NIHB. And Don and I, through uh, our NIHO grant, which is the National Indian Health Outreach and Education Initiative, generously funded by IHS, uh, through that grant, we were able to travel to several different tribal communities over the summer to provide Affordable Care Act training for uh, ITU staff and for tribal community members. We've also set up uh, exhibit booths at several different uh, annual conferences. Um, and when we went out to do these trainings, we often partnered with the uh, IHS area um, and also the uh, Area Indian Health Board. So you, if we came out to your community, you might see yourself in one of these photos. So uh, as 
Um, Kimberly mentioned earlier in, in the photo that she had in her presentation is this same photo. It's become very popular. We were actually out at the Uinta and Uare tribe in Fort Duchesne, Utah. We partnered with Nakui to provide a day-long training for their community members and uh, their employees um, and invited ITU staff as well. So we were out there um, on July 14th. And as Kimberly mentioned, we also invited um, the navigators from the uh, Salt Lake City area and they came out and they set up right outside of the ballroom and, and everything that we were talking about, about the special protections for American Indians and Alaska Natives in, in the Affordable Care Act, about the exemption waiver. It was, it, we, they were, folks were in the audience were able to leave our training, go outside and fill out an exemption waiver or f find out their options through the marketplace. So that was really neat to partner with the navigators um, and, and when doing out doing our training and we try to do that as much as we can. Here just two days later from Salt Lake or from Utah we were in Phoenix and uh, we partnered with the Phoenix area and the uh, I just Phoenix area and the um, Intertribal Council of Arizona to provide this training to the Phoenix area. Here we are with the Phoenix Indian Medical Center staff uh, also, we partnered with Nakui, and uh, that's Eric Jordan right in the middle, and my colleague Don Coley in the white coat, and uh, yours truly right there with that big cheesy smile. And here uh, we are at, Don is talking with a conference attendee at the Association of American Indian Physicians Annual Conference in Denver. I, I, I keep coming back to Denver. I don't know what it is about Denver. I don't, um, but here we are, Don is talking to this young lady about the exemption waiver. And the materials that you see on this table are part of our elders uh, campaign. Our elders, uh, an ACA campaign, we, um, so um, graciously partnered with uh, a bunch of awesome, awesome um, tribal leaders to, and they, we provided, or I'm sorry, we produced a public service announcement on how the Affordable Care Act strengthens Medicare for our Native elders. So they went and listed the five fast facts of how uh, ACA strengthens Medicare. And from that PSA, we created these awesome materials. So you see uh, some brochures, you'll see some um, posters, and we provided uh, Affordable Care Act uh, presentation specific to physicians, what physicians need to know about the Affordable Care Act there at the AIP conference. And then we went to the Navajo Nation. My colleague Don and I hit five communities in five days on the Navajo Nation. It was quite the trip. We partnered with the Navajo Nation Department of Health as well as the Navajo Area IHS. And here we are uh, on July 28th in Winderock, Arizona. That was the first um, training that we did to, to kick off our journey across the Navajo Res. Uh, I believe there was 146 people that attended this particular training, all ITU staff. And, um, and I think I may have asked them if they were a certified application counselor here and they're raising their hand, or maybe it was, um, I asked them if they like mutton or who was bringing me blue corn mush. But th this uh, journey was incredible and I have to give major thanks to the Navajo area IHS and to the Navajo Department of Health. The next day we hit Crown Point, New Mexico and there we are. We had a great turnout at each session. The next day on Wednesday, July 30th, we were at Nina Hanzad, New Mexico. The next day we went, we were in Chinle, Arizona. We were, we switched venues the day before the Chinle uh, training because we had so many people that wanted to come. I think we had nearly 90 folks that showed up here and we had representatives from the Arizona and New Mexico exchanges as well as the Arizona and New Mexico um, Medicaid offices. So that was a really, really informative training session there. And then we ended in Tuba City on August 1st. And here uh, folks are looking at the exemption form. This was our planning staff. So there's members of the Navajo Nation Div Division of, uh, of Health here as well as Navajo Area IHS. 
And then we went to the Great Plains Tribal Chairman's Health Board Health Summit in Omaha. That was a great turnout there. They have a navigator grant as well, so they're, they had their booth set up and they're here. You'll see here that they're assisting this young lady and uh, she's figuring out what her options are in the marketplace. And then we went out to Oklahoma City, uh, to Shawnee, Oklahoma, and we worked with the Oklahoma City Area Indian Health Board. So there they are the folks there. And then ACA, I'm sorry, ACC, the NIHB Annual Consumer Conference, we had, as Kimberly mentioned, had several um, Affordable Care Act sessions. So this was one on enrollment assisters, best practices and lessons learned, packed house. Here's one on, uh, again, enrollment assisters. This is Tinka Duran who's standing up. She is the nav uh, manager of the Navigator Program at the Great Plains Tribal Chairman's Health Board. And, and then we went out to Tucson and we did a training there for the Tucson area, partnered with the Pasquayaki tribe and the Tohono O'odham tribe and uh, the Tucson area IHS. It was raining that day and um, they have apparently have some really big problems with flooding. So we didn't get quite the turnout we wanted, but these brave folks, they came out uh, and, and supported us and, and learned. We were excited about that. And we were at the National Congress of American Indians annual convention just last, um, last month in Atlanta. We did a session there uh, on a basic ACA overview. Uh, and we also talked, uh, Laura Bird there who has in front of the microphone, she's the legislative associate for the National Congress of American Indians who works on ACA and her expertise is in tribal, uh, the ma tribal employer mandate or the employer mandate of ACA and she puts that tribal twist to it. So she, and this is our booth at uh, NCAI convention and there Don is talking with um, Mr. Edwigashik's wife to get uh, coverage for their son. So she was able to right there at the booth go in create an account uh, get the information um, about the, the son via the mom and it turned out he had about a $73 premium or something like that. Uh, so he was able to get a plan um, via his mother and uh, she, she was really excited about that. Always taking care of the kids, right? And that's it. But we I do want to promote that um, really heavy this year in CA, I'm sorry, NIHB is working really hard to do in a lot more enrollment events. Of course, we're still going to do the trainings, but we really want to get more and more of our American Indians and Alaska Native folks uh, enrolled in the marketplace, or even just to see if they're eligible for Medicaid or for CHIP. Uh, uh, building on what Kimberly was throwing out there about uh, outreach ideas and how to involve the, the community, I'm going to build in some best practices that we've learned at Nakui. Uh, again, I've been there for two years, and one of my first tasks is kind of to streamline our communication. Um, uh, often, when you have multiple platforms to reach out to people, stories and the actual information that you need to get out is kind of lost. Um, often, we duplicate our methods, uh, duplicate our software and our, our communications platforms, and uh, we don't keep it streamlined. We don't stick to the actual meaning of what we're trying to get out. And as you can see in this image right here, I mean, with today's technology, information is so easily available, but how do you make it marketable to your community? How do you make it matter to the people that you're trying to reach out to? That's been one of the biggest tasks that uh, I've been challenged with at Nakui. You know, uh, apparently, you know, obviously we have current forms of social media and uh, newsletters, emails that are easy to get out, but are they reaching the people that really the information matters to. Uh, we've been reverting back a little bit more towards a, an older version, print, you know, that's an old version. But, uh, you know, we want to do uh, paper newsletters, paper email, uh, mail outs, because those, those are the ones that matter. People will open that up, they'll read through it. Uh, one a statistic that my brother threw out to me was about 44% of American Indians actually have access to the internet. In today's communication, and especially in Washington, D.C., that's a, a, a huge thing to overlook, is how do you reach out to the people, how do you get them involved, and how do you get them to the events that really will help uh, progress healthcare, and especially in our, in our communities. 
Twitter and Facebook are growing so fast that it's, it's, it's on your phones. It's, it's everywhere. Even if you don't have internet service, people have cell phones. And if you want to reach your community, if you want to get a hold of them and actually involve them in Twitter and Facebook, it, it's, it's a snap. People will pick up their phone. They'll enter it in there. Um, it's amazing. Um, recently, uh, I've been accustomed to Facebook, but recently I've been uh, integrating Twitter more into our communication. We had a Twitter chat. Um, for you that don't know what that is, it's a, a group of people who all tag each other into a conversation that goes on for about 15, 20 minutes through Twitter. Uh, we partnered with the White House, and as you can tell, that, that probably is a, a good partner to build on. So next time they have a call, you guys should all have your communications person sign in. We doubled our outreach in one day in a 30-minute conversation of just me being there, of, of us just tweeting out, sharing what was coming down, build your, your supporter list. This is, this is a huge thing, and, and it's been said throughout the conference. Um, Dr. Rubido came up here and said, you know, we can see you guys are doing great things. We can see you're all doing great work in your community, but who else is seeing it? If you're doing good things and it's not passing your city limits, it's not making that, that national level, it's not being seen by the people who are on the Hill who are making these decisions that are, are, are deciding your funding. It's important that people can see what work you're doing. It's important for, especially uh, for a membership base, that we build on each other's events. We build on each other's outreach because li resources are limited. We won't always be able to create our own event but by partnering with each other and sharing that information, we could piggyback each other and, and really build as, as a membership and as a, as a larger national community, you know, as, as urban Indians. Uh, going forward, we actually, uh, we've been integrating uh, a little bit more face-to-face -face through, through uh, electronics, uh, Skype. Uh, GoToMeeting is one of my favorites. We actually had a call uh, October 22nd going over communications, how we can streamline it, how we can make it more efficient. Um, and how can we reach out better? Uh, we know that you as uh, executive directors, CEOs, um, you all have a ton of work to do to keep your programs going. You know, if there's a problem with getting the information down, reach out to us. Let us know who is your communications person. If you don't have a communications person dedicated only to that, let us know how we can, you know, uh, send out maybe three or four people in your organization and we can share that information. It's, uh, it's important that we all are on the same page as we go forward. Uh, to pass the Indian Health Care Improvement Act was one step, but now to actually to implement it. That's the next big one. Um, outreach, enrollment, all, all these are very important for us to continue to grow our numbers and to make sure that the numbers that are growing are being seen on the national level. Um, I've been using uh, Salsa Labs as a newsletter. Some of you might use Constant Contact. All of them are great. They all have analytics, and that is a moneymaker. If you ask our technical assistance area, if you have the numbers to show people are looking at what you're doing, you're marketable. You, you are reaching people, and when you show that to your project directors, when I show it to my uh, development director and my, my supervisor, those numbers go a long way. Um, and it's important to document them. Um, if you need help on how to store them, how to build them, how to word it, please reach out to me. Um, it's something that I've been uh, challenged with over the past year and a half, and I think uh, we as an organization have became better on, on growing and, and marketing those numbers. Um, our website, uh, Alejandro is going to go forward and he's going to talk to us about, uh, we are re uh, integrating multiple websites into one version. Uh, right now we have three separate websites. One is the urbanindianhealth.org, which fo uh, focuses on policy and legislation. Uh, the second one is our actual website, the nukui.org gives you a general oversight of everything that we got going on, our special projects, uh, different communications. Um, also, our blog is con consistently uh, updated. Our third website is actually the Knowledge Resource Center. This is a, a hub of information. It's considered like an electronic library of uh, documents we've collected over, I believe it's about seven years now. Um, it's a pet product of Alejandro that I came in midway and was uh, challenged to try and keep it, keep it going. Uh, this is another way that we want to make sure we integrate all three websites to make it easily navigable for you. Um, and then the third, the last one that we've actually started going back towards is our print newsletter. Again, you, you have to have a spectrum. It has to be uh, multiple platforms to really target as, the wide, uh, as wide of an audience as we can. So I'm going to pass it over to Alejandro. He's going to go through, and then I'll be back up here in a couple minutes. So something that I realized is that, you know, the Nakui has evolved. 
it has evolved quite a bit and, and we, we all have evolved, you know, the clinics, the members, uh, in regards to our work, uh, when, when I left Nakui, the IHCIA or IKEA had just passed and our, our work as a national organization, it was policy we were pushing so forward and so much uh, to, uh, for IHCIA and the health care reform to pass and it passed. And so with that, you know, the, the scope of work for NECUI changed completely, right? From just policy-focused work and trying to go to Congress all the time to actually implement uh, the health care reform or uh, technical assistance. So that's why uh, Kim, you know, um, gets to work so much on this. So with that evolution, you know, uh, also our main means of communications change. So uh, the current state of our communications tools reflects these changes. So uh, in, for us to try and to accomplish so much uh, in regards to technical assistance, research, policy still working on it, communications becoming its own field. Uh, so we evolved in different ways trying to approach uh, everything that we could. So we have three websites that we now have to integrate. One is policy focused, the other one is research focused, and the other one is the information that should be ready, uh, readily available for all of you. So um, w what I want to say is that we are going to undergo, if I may say that, uh, a restructuring of, of the communication to serve you better. Because at NACUI we're here to serve you. Uh, and also in regards to communications. And something that I was just uh, talking to Reno about before is that communications is a two-way. You know, otherwise, if we are just disseminating information, we're just putting information out there for you to see. And, and sometimes with just one person, and I, I, I praise Reno for everything that he does because he has so much information that he has to disseminate to all of you. Sometimes it gets very overwhelming. So what we're going to try to do with this is we're going to streamline everything that we do. We're going to make it very easy internally and, and externally to communicate with you. So um, my message that I wanted to, to give you is that please uh, talk to us. Communicate with us anything that you would like to, to say, uh, positive feedback, you know, uh, or, you know, any criticism, anything. Just please let us know how we can improve and, and do better our work. And, and so... That's something that I, I, I would really uh, appreciate if you do. So here we have uh, the work and evolution from policy to TA uh, implementation, and there has been an exponential growth uh, for NECUI, not only in, in the amount of work that we do, but also the scope of work that we uh, are doing now with the grants with the navigators and NIHO. Uh, we, ha we worked a lot with CMS, which is something that we didn't do uh, other than in policy in the past. So the scope of work that we have is much larger and that has to be reflected in the communications that we have with you. So this is, this is more or less uh, a visual, uh, being a communications major, you know, I, I always use visuals as, as aids also because, uh, you know, sometimes I get stutter in English. So <laughs> I thought that, you know, visuals are much more easier for me to share with you. Uh, this is, uh, let's say that the left part is all that we have. You know, we have so much information to share with you. And it is only valuable if, you, if it reaches to you, to your community, uh, to the right person. Sometimes we have bottlenecks in regards to communication. It has to do with the means that we use. Sometimes it has to do with who we are reaching out to or any other uh, problems that we have. So we need to uh, um, have a, an organization of the information to reach better the people that we have to reach. As um, many of my colleagues have shared here, you know, younger generations use a lot of social media. And I think, uh, you know, our generation is also catching up and older generations are catching up, but we have different means of communication for dif from different people and we just have to organize information so that we reach out to the right people, uh, giving the, uh, the right message. So we have all this information. What we want to do is to create like that tree, you know, it's the same information, but it's organized in a harmonized manner. And, you know, people are attracted to different uh, things in different ways. And we may be able to provide that information, the same exact information, to an elder, to somebody who is in mid-career, to somebody who's younger, to somebody who's a youth, uh, in different ways, and that's what we're trying to do. So um, in order for us to reach to that point, uh, we're going to do the restructuring, as I mentioned, of the website, but we're also going to be restructuring inside or internally. Uh, we have uh, the communities of learning that are led by Dr. Fowler, and, and you know, so we have to streamline all that information, provide an infrastructure to, to give you the best of the communications that we have uh, at NECUI. So as you may see under the tree, there has to be an infrastructure. We're working on that, and we're working on that to serve you better. Uh, so my, my last message that I just want to mention is, uh, uh, 
communication again is a two way, so please you know, uh, let us know anything that, uh, that you would like to let us know. And with that, I'm going to pass it again to Reno uh, for the following reason. We're going to start also working on, on a larger marketing uh, campaign, and uh, Reno is going to start the preliminary work for that, and he's going to talk a little bit about it. Thank you. Uh, so here is a link for a survey that we have out there. We're going to be sending this out through an email. Um, I believe it's, we're going to use Jeremy's email just to make sure it reaches everybody. But uh, it, it's, it's a 14 questions. Uh, we had a conversation uh, with the membership. We've had a, a very small turnout, but that was October 22nd. And we went an overview of the survey um, asking a couple basic questions just about what internal communications uh, the membership uses. Uh, what external communication platforms you all use to get your information out to the communities, and also how can we reach you better. Uh, the, the task that Alejandro mentioned is we wanted to start to create a national marketing and outreach campaign for all of urban Indian health programs. Um, we all know that there's strength in numbers, and we all know that the importance of showing those numbers, and, and it's important for all of us to be a part of this, to make sure all of our voices are heard. Um, earlier on, everybody had a chance, or I hope everybody had a chance to sit down with Dr. Rubido and uh, to go over some of your internal needs. What do you want in your regions? What do you want in your communities? What do you want for your programs? All of those questions are very important. And without asking them to, you know, to the, without asking them to the people who are making these decisions, um, they're not gonna be answered the way that we would like. Uh, so again, this is the survey is going to go on out. We asked everybody, it's about 10, 15 minutes, if you could take it out, uh, fill it out. Again, if you have a communications person or if you have someone that focuses on that in your organization, send it to them. Uh, the more information we receive, the better we're going to be able to tailor this to what, uh, what we want as a, as a national, um, national set of, of people, a national set of communities. And it's important for us to, to say it like that. It's, uh, you know, as you can see here in this room, you know, we are a national organization and we represent as best as we can everybody's voice. And it's important for everybody to have a chance to talk. I'm going to go back to uh, one, of, one of the big uh, lists that's coming up that we want to describe, uh, that we want to go over is, as you can see from NIHB's and from uh, Dr. Fowler's presentation, it's important to, to document your events, to show what you've been doing in your communities. And uh, one of the big topics that we wanted to uh, go over for the 2014-2015 fiscal year, what events are you guys doing in your communities? You know, what, uh, what, what, you know, we had our, a round dance uh, Sunday night. I'm sorry, I'm lost in travel. But we had a round dance in D.C. We had about 300 people. It's not a huge gathering, but still, it's important to have those community events. And we've had uh, a couple booths set up just talking about what's coming down the line. It's important to have those events out there. And, and more importantly, when you have communities that are close together, I know Kevin right there in New York uh, comes on down. We have people in Richmond and in Baltimore. They come on down. We, we share each other's um, community events. We share each other's you know, communities. And that's the important part of it is to build those because everybody knows health starts with in, in the house, in the community, and then in our, in, in our uh, programs. You know, without a healthy community, we'll never grow to be a, a healthy people. So uh, it's important that we share this with each other.